Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. You forgot your show notes since I... Can you imagine? That's what I'm looking for. Over the last three years, we have traveled through the hills and the valleys of Nigeria. I've seen people combine their coleslaw with a father rice and pomo before. Say what? As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. There is no planting season for us. We produce here every week. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. We advise farmers to top dress with urea at the rate of 90 kg per hectare. For a very long time, I think we neglected farming in Nigeria. We provide loan to these farmers and then we've, uh, we've been working with them for like over 10 years now. So anybody can participate in agriculture. This is Farm and Fortune. Off the record is a phrase alien to Mr. Budipe. For him, the only way to succeed at farm business is to document everything. Like any other business, accountability is primary. And the only way we can do that is we want to see what are your inputs and your outputs. It doesn't matter if it is lost. If it's, if it's in red, let it be documented. It only supports you in taking decisions. And that is one area that perhaps I think most farmers get into bottleneck. And what is bottleneck? Year one, year two, year three, year four. They see their returns in red. Because it's a source of worry. Heartache. When will I get out of this crisis? Ashrita Furman has set more than 600 official Guinness records and he currently holds the Guinness World Records for the most Guinness World Records. Even Asherita will find today's farmer's record-keeping skills impressive. And what is even more impressive is how and when it started all of this. But let's don't go fast ahead of the show. Let's keep it real. Welcome to Farm and Fortune. A show where we show people how to farm their way to fortune. We have a lot to unpack for you today. So we'll bring you to the fortune board. Are you ready? The first factor is the magnitude of challenge. I will score him a 16 because there is nothing like discouragement. Ah, it can be so painful. You know, you don't know what is happening. You don't know you're just starting something new. Starting something new is not easy. Mm -hmm. It can be scary, mm -hmm. giving you anxiety, mm -hmm. self-doubt, mm -hmm. and can be crippling. You mm -hmm. know the way we call them? Yes. You know? He, seeing all of this is, and he's still able to do something is impressive. But for me, mm. for farmer attitude, I'm going to score him a 15. Great. Yes. He's still looking. Mm. Now it's time to go back to Mr. Ogundipe's story. Don't finish your snacks. Oh yeah, sit down. There's still a lot to learn and enjoy on farm and fortune. Let's go. Bookkeeping has been of high value to me as a person. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps by, my, by my training, I, I love figures. Yeah. Even daily records of egg collection, it, it's not enough to say they have, this is what they have done. I want to be able to compare what they did yesterday with two days back, penultimate week, they can keep track. No, no, you can't tell me they did this yesterday. This time last week, they did this. Otherwise, something must be wrong. Do we need to call in the vet, vet, vet doctor? If you don't get those things right, invariably, you'll be losing your value at the end of the day. So in the same vein, your bookkeeping must be top-notch. Take for instance, I won't put in 200,000 to buy drugs, to buy X, Y, Z. And then two, three days after, I can't see the value for it. It's a cost. I can't see the return for it. It gives you heartache. But somebody that is not, that has no direct, if uh, there's what you call incidence, incidence of that cost. I bear the incidence of the cost. He is an employee. He is to just keep it the way he finds it. But I that is bringing out the money, it pinches me. This f 200,000 has gone the, down the drain. So, you need to keep books 
so that your records will be clear to advise you. And the best way to do it, get somebody else to do that for you. So if you're the man that is doing this, you're the CEO, you're bringing out the money, you're getting returns back, and then you're keeping the books. You cannot, you are most likely will not be able to do it well. There can't be any halfway. Because for you as a person, no matter how small that business is, you cannot do it yourself. Separate, uh, separate the responsibilities. Uh, in economics, we call it um, division of labor. Today's guest really needs no introduction. But what's a show without introducing its guests? Let's meet Farmer Samson Ogboli. Hey, welcome to the show, Farmer Samson. Thank you very much. We have a lot to unpack on this show today. But uh, could you quickly give us a crash course on uh, bookkeeping? You know, what's bookkeeping and why is it so important? All right. So uh, before I try explaining why it's so important, uh, we want to start like this. This is called agribusiness. And for every business, the core purpose is money. If you do not know how money comes in and how money goes out, it's only a matter of time you'll be out of business. Yeah. So it means that if I'm in business and I understand that business is about money, then I need to track how my money comes in and how my money goes out. So bookkeeping is basically keeping records of how money comes in, how money goes out. What activities you do that brings in money, what activities you do that takes out money. Now, very important as an entrepreneur, if as an individual you are not disciplined with money, then your business is just a channel to lose money. Mm. Because who you are will reflect in your business. So if I am the kind of person, anytime I get money, all the whole eateries know my name. <laughs> when I become a businessman, I just have a bigger platform to throw out money. So before you run a business first, discipline yourself. If you can't discipline yourself, give your financial part of your company to somebody else to manage, then most importantly, it is your business, but it is not your money. The money your business is making belongs to your business. So it is perfectly valid for your business to be rich and you are broke. Mm. So bookkeeping allows you to focus on the money, Know what gives you money, what takes out money, what you are supposed to minimize and what to maximize in simple terms. So this whole thing about cash flow, uh, balance sheets, gross margins, what's the impact of all these terminologies on agribusiness? Let me put it in simple terms. Cash flow is how money comes, how money goes. Now, your balance sheet helps us to know, okay, what are the things really taking out money? What are the things really giving you money? The gross margin is how much profit are you really making on your business? Mm. Now, for those who are interested, go and read out on what's it called pricing strategy to know. We have about six, seven different methods of pricing. Know what pricing method works best for you to know how much margin you are putting in. So is it very important now for agribusiness entrepreneurs or common language farmers, young farmers, you know, people who are just starting agribusiness to, to, to hire maybe an accountant or an auditor or are there apps or softwares or uh, platforms that can help them achieve that? So there are apps. Now, much more than that, I always say this, if you are a student in school, mm. look for somebody's head that is head is correct, that is in, in that sphere. Make friends with them early. Now, even if you want to use apps, not all of these apps would help you do all of these things in the basics. Mm. But you can go to some of your friends in school who have graduated also looking for a job. You have found something. For some, now there is this thing of you can give them shares in your company, give them equity. You may not have funds to pay them. Give them equity. Why are you trying to own 100% of something that would fail? When you can just get them on board and together you own 100% of something that will succeed. All What's right. the most basic thing in bookkeeping that every book or a farm record should have? Okay, so let's remove the debit and um, credit and all of that. The simplest way to start, get a 2A note. Your 2A number 2A note. exercise book. Exercise book. The number 2A. When you get your 2A, on one, write expenditure. Mm. anything that goes out, write it. Any money you spend? Any money you Fertilizer, spend. If you cannot seeds. name it, don't spend it. Oh, okay. Any, there is nothing like miscellaneous. It but, has a name. Eh, what of maybe like occasionally okay, soft drink and For what? sausage on the road? You, you went to one and buy fertilizer, eh. but there was traffic. 
use your own pocket money. No, no, no. Drink. So that's the difference. You yeah. use your own money. Not the business. Not money. company's money. Okay. To do the soft drink. Okay. Because the reality we have learned over time is you won't die. Mm. If that money was not there, you would survive. Okay. But if you have your personal money, spend it. Okay. Now, if for any reason you decide to be, uh, let me just make the book sweet, and you need to use it on writing, snacks, during. So it needs to be accounted for. It has to be accounted for. If there is anything that can get receipts, get the receipts. Beautiful. So that you staple it. So mm. you are able to put all your expenditures on one side. In one exercise book. One exercise way. book. In another book, that's where you write all your income, mm. all the revenues. Is it revenue from training? Is it revenue from your farm? You are able to put out everything clear. That way you are doing proper mm. accounting. So with that, you've started. Beautiful. I mean, that's the most simplistic way I can imagine. And you've really thrown a lot of light into this. Now, let's quickly check the fortune board. What would you score uh, our farmer uh, for his access to resources? Score him over 40. Yes, over 40, I would give him um, 35. 35? That's not me being too generous. Mm. I'm giving him 35 because the fact that he knows what he needs. Mm. So it's one thing, there is this whole deception you people give to themselves in a Greek that I can read it online. My father was a farmer, mm. so automatically he's inherited. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that he knows that knowledge is not transmittable through gene, mm. it's core. Two, at his age, he knows what he does not know. Mm. There is no pride of, mm -mm. I'm not too old or too I'm big. not too, like, this is me. You know, no, no, no. you know I'm an accountant. Exactly. I must know everything about farming. Mm. Exactly. So, yeah, with that, 35. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, hold that thought. We need to take a moment right now and show you some DIY hacks. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the DIY segment. Did you know that you can improve your bookkeeping by using crop management software? A good crop management software can help you track the following. Harvesting, shipping, planting seasons, packaging, spray records, rainfall, crop health, field activities and resource allocation, pest management, and financial records. Explore crop management software like Cropio, and Crop Tracker to improve your bookkeeping and generate records easily. That's our hack for today. See you next week. Welcome back to the show. It's still Farm and Fortune, and we've been talking with our experts in the house, Farmer Samson. When is it the right time to reinvest, and when is it uh, the right uh, place and the right step to take? So the right time to invest is first you are profitable. If you are not profitable, you are not qualified to reinvest. Now, when we say reinvest, let me put it this way, because somebody might think, oh, I am planting something. I'm not yet profitable, but I have to invest in buying more cassava or more um, fertilizers. No, that's not what I mean. We're talking about reinvestment in expansion. You are not pr profitable on a small scale. You've not understood the business on how to break even on a small scale. When you go on a larger scale, you realize that the flaws that have not shown up properly on the small scale would only have the capacity to develop on a larger scale. So you need to first understand that you are profitable, number one. Number two, you've taken yourself out of the business. It's still your business, but there is a system managing that business that ensures that without your physical input, the business can run and you can generate the same result that they would have gotten even if you were there. Mm. Now, once you have a system that can operate without you, now you are out of the system. That is the time you can now see, oh, maybe this is what I should do next. This is where we should improve on. Talking about expansion, you've seen our documentary and you've seen our farmer. How would you rate him or score him over 20 in terms of his growth potential? So looking at his growth potential, I would say 15. 15? He has a good growth potential. Mm -hmm. The reason is, one, there was something he said, as somebody that studied accounting himself, he said, I got somebody else to manage that aspect. Now, I know somebody will be wondering, why am I using his finance to judge him? Mm. The success or failure of any business is the finance. Mm. You may have good brand recognition. You may have all the other parts. If the finance is not making sense, nothing makes sense. Two, he said something about the fact that not only is he looking at the bookkeeping, he's also taking proper record. 
how many eggs are we getting? What did we get yesterday? What did we get the day before yesterday? So he is meticulous enough to follow the nitty gritty of the business. Mm. So in agribusiness, mm. you have short, medium, and long term. Some turnovers are not immediate. immediate. Yes. Vegetables and some fruits you can have within one thing, cycle, yeah. within a year, three months, maize and the likes. Yeah. Some, palm, oil palm, oh, yeah. many years. You keep pumping money and pumping money. When should be the right time for someone to sit back and look and say, look, I've been pumping money into this thing, but based on these factors, I think it's time to diversify or to call it quits. I tell people, before you go into planting, trade the product first. Hmm. Trade the product, product first. Buy, sell. Buy, buy and sell. sell. Why? Now, the reason is, if I put my money into planting, that is sunk cost. Hmm. If anything happens to that farm, that money is gone. That's all. If I put my money into trading, the risks are lower because at the end, even if you plant, you still need to sell. Mm -hmm. So you are still coming back to this table where we are selling. But if I start from selling, the profit I make, I can put it in farming. Even if the farm decides to die, I can regenerate my profit from my selling. Mm. So trade first. Now, once that is done, before you now say, okay, let me go into planting. Now, when do you quit? When you don't have results. It's the question of result. And you need to give yourself some timelines. Put in proper KPIs. This again is where bookkeeping and record taking comes in. We're back to bookkeeping. You, don't, you do not wait to the end of the year to realize you've lost. Because with record keeping, you can say, we were supposed to get this in January. It didn't come true. Hmm. February didn't come true. Why are you waiting till December? Can I correct this? Is this a knowledge deficit? If it's a knowledge deficit, who can come in? Is this a process deficit? Is it a structure then at times you realize that so many people who are in that scenario did not clearly define what they want out of the process. They didn't set a proper goal. There's no proper goal. You ask the person, what do you want? I want to have 20 hectares of cassava. To do what? Why? To, Why? To Bugawa. To Buga Thank you. So by the time you say you want 20 hectares of cassava, your workers had 20 hectares of cassava in their mind. Hello, Shoga. Thank yeah. you very much for my sensing. I must really appreciate mm -hmm. you for. But before you go, I'm going to ask, I have to ask you this question. You've seen our farmer yeah. and uh, his approach to everything he's doing. So we've graded him, we've scored him on our fortune board. What do you think is going to make overall as a total score out of 100? Mm. I know I gave him about 50. And considering you've never given me giveaway, <laughs> that means you are stingy. So <laughs> let's say 60 or 70. Mm. They are close. But you know what? Our farmer is actually an A-lister. You know, he's, he's scored very high. A. Yes. He's 81. Yes. You see, farmers are A-list. Yes, so farmers are A-list. Thank you so much once again for thank you so much. Well, for coming to the show. And thank you for not holding back and sharing and giving thank us so back to back of your wealth of experience. We really appreciate it. And wish you all the very best thank in your so business much. endeavors. Guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to join Helen Paul right now on the Secrets of the Soil segment. We'll be right back. As much as possible, get very friendly with your bookkeeper so that he or she does not misappropriate, which is very easy. We have seen accountant generals fiddle with their money. It's only, it's only because somebody was not checking appropriately. That check is very primary. Yeah. Bookkeeping has been of high value to me as a person. I will tell you, it is very difficult. You hardly can get 100% compliance. But the more, the closer to it, the better for you as the owner and for the business. It's still Farm and Fortune, and this segment we look at the secret of the soil. Our soil expert is here in the studio with us. Is no other person than Mr. Babajide Lawal Ahmed. It's good to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you for always honoring our inv invitation. No problem. I want to ask you, since we're looking at the soil care for oil palm production, so what kind of soil is best for growing oil palm? Thank you very much. Generally, a loamy soil, well-drained soil, rich in organic matter, and also have sufficient moisture. Hmm. Also, not forgetting that the pH ranges from 4.8 to 8.0. All these are considered best for growing oil palm. So does that mean that it's not 
um, it can function in on every land in Nigeria? No, generally, oil palm is mostly, pro mostly produced in the southern parts of the country wow. due to their climatic conditions. States like Cross River State, River State, Edo State, Delta State, or your states, just to mention a few. Great. Thank so you. please tell me, is there any soil care regime for growing oil palm? Oh, okay. Generally, farmers are encouraged to carry out soil testing before going to any agricultural production. Good. Soil testing provides the farmers the nutrient content of the soil. If the soil content, if the nutrients of the soil are generally high, there's no need for the farmer to apply extra fertilizer mm. again. But if the soil content is low, there's need for the farmers to supplement with fertilizer or organic sources like manure or an organic matter. Also, generally the management for older for oil palm, older oil palm are different for that of a younger oil palm. While for the older oil, uh, oil palm, generally they need to be pruned. Mm. They need to prune, they remove the dead leaves. For the younger oil palm, they need to be maintained at a nursery stage before they get to the matured state for transplanting and the rest. You've practiced so much. You know so much about different soils for different states. Thank you, Thank you so time. much for coming on the show. It's good to I've be learned here. so much and I'm very sure that you've learned so much as well. It's still Farm and Fortune and the next segment right now is Ban Banta. Let's go. Thank you. It's still Farm and Fortune. Welcome to Ban Banta. In line with today's episode of Keeping Records, today's roundtable will be a memorable game. There will be sequences shown on the screen for each participant to memorize. They will show for 60 seconds only. After the screen goes off, you are to pick one of the sequences and list out the correct steps as you saw them. Don't forget, our guests are so special playing the game today. We have Falaye Yinka and Durojaye Ahmed. Thank you so much for honoring us on this show. Thank you for having us. Are you ready? I am but ready. before I go into the game, I want to know, personally, someone who's into agricultural business, how do you keep you know, your records, your business record? How do you document it? How do you do it, personally, Mr. Ahmed? Yeah. I make use of some uh, mobile app. Oh, you use mobile app? Yes. Great. There's this uh, my farm manager. So that's okay. what I use in keeping record. For of farmers. Yes. Uh, app for farmers. Yes. Great. What about you, sir? I just follow his shit. Oh. Make use of the app. You follow everything he does. Yes. You, you know him before? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, so say your own now. I follow the farm app my manager. Oh, well. <laughs> so you follow the app as well. So everyone now is into technology. Yeah, it's make it more easier. Very good. So are you ready for the game? Yes. Yeah. Very ready. Please pick one. Great. Now, look at the screen. You memorize the one that goes with your alphabet. So look at it. A is process of creating a balance sheet. And B is steps in processing oil palm. So look at it. Memorize the five. Buzzer will come on once the time is up. 60 seconds. Still counting. Memory verse. Study. Ah. Ah. Even me, I'm trying to grab. Time up. Okay? So let's take it off. Thank you. Mr. Yinka, what do you have? I have letter A. Letter A, good. Give us the list. Letter A. Yes. Pick a date. Pick a date. Identify asset. Identify asset. Identify liability. Identify liability. Add total liability. Add total liability. Add total assets. Add total assets. Great. Mr. Ahmed, yes. what alphabet? That's yes, letter B. B, please, can you face it to the audience? Thank you. Can you give us the lists? Okay, sterilizing canal. Sterilizing canal. Threshing canal. Threshing canal. Um, pressing canal. Pressing canal. Oil clarification. Oil clarification. Storage of oil. Storage of oil. Both of you are winners on Farm and Fortune. We're having a tie, but we want just one winner. Just one. So what are we going to do? 
Since is a game for you to memorize. Please exchange the cards. You've exchanged the card, good. Give us what's on B. Sterilizing canal. Sterilizing canal. Threshing canal. Threshing canal. Pressing canal. Pressing canal. Oil clarification. Oil clarification. Then storage of oil. Storage of oil. What do you have in A? Okay, place order. Place order. Um. Collect the food of order? No, no. no. You failed it! <laughs> Wow, you did so well, both of you, though. And the winner of this game is Mr. Adeyinka. How do you feel? I'm very, very happy. You feel very happy. <laughs> Today, Mr. Inka will be going home with 100,000 Naira worth of farm inputs. Of course, we have consolation prize also for Mr. Ahmed. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. It's so good. Don't forget, don't go anywhere. It's still farm and fortune. Enjoy. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we've talked a lot. We've learned a lot. And we've had fun. A lot of fun. It's been great hanging out with you guys. Thank you for staying locked in throughout this episode. But remember, success can come in your business. Just be ready and willing to put in the work. And also document your process as we've learned today. Of course. Don't forget, look for value. And people will definitely look for you with their money. My name is Helen Paul. I'm Frank Donga. And see you, see you next, next week. week.